and welcome to this ESS revision video for 6.1 Introduction to the Atmosphere and today we're looking at how the atmosphere has changed and looking at climate change. So you need to understand what is the actual atmosphere, what it is actually made up of and the percentages approximately of gas in the atmosphere. So in the atmosphere there is um, the first of all, the atmosphere is a thin layer of gas that surrounds the planet and you need to know it's a dynamic system, which means that it constantly changes because it's constantly inputs and outputs. So if you look at the graph at the bottom there, you can see even during the day, the amount of um, oxygen goes up as carbon dioxide drops and then to a higher level because of photosynthesis and then at night time, the opposite happens as the plants respire but stop doing photosynthesis. And you can see here the main gases in the air are nitrogen, which you should know about how plants and uh, rhizobium bacteria get them out from unit one. Oxygen, 21%, and all other gases make up only 1% of the Earth's atmosphere. And this is in dry air, so water is not included. And carbon dioxide, often described as 0.04, is a very, very small amount of our actual gases. Um, and you're expected to, be able to think about the fact that human activity would impact the atmosphere because of stuff like climate emissions, etc. But it might be a fact that a small emission of greenhouse gases has a bigger effect than we realise because the Earth's atmosphere is very sensitive to carbon dioxide and methane changes particularly. So you need to know about the structure of the atmosphere vertically as we go up. So if we start at the bottom, the lower side, we have the troposphere. That is the bit that we live in. Um, and because of the um, changes in air pressure and the amount of particles, as you go higher up, the temperature will decrease due to less heating from infrared radiation off the ground. So there's less reflection of that heat hitting those particles and there's less conduction between the particles. We then go to the ozone layer, which is in the stratosphere. Um, and this is where light interacts with oxygen, making ozone. So UV interacting with oxygen to make ozone. And we'll talk about the importance of stratosphere ozone uh, in the next video. Ozone in the troposphere is very bad. And we'll talk about that in the photochemical smog video. As you go up, into the stratosphere the temperature increases again because there is less shielding from um, the UV radiation and therefore there's more exposure and the temperature increases. Then we go into the mesosphere um, and basically what happens is pressure decreases in the mesosphere so you get less and less air particles so at the bottom there might be quite a few air particles sort of close to each other which means heat can be transferred from one to another but as you go up the air particles get fewer and far between and therefore there's less conduction between air particles and therefore the temperature drops and then finally as you go into the thermosphere the temperature then suddenly increases and that is because then we are completely exposed 100 percent to the uh, sun's rays and therefore the temperature increases rapidly in the thermosphere and if you remember the name thermosphere it means warm part of the sphere, so warm sphere. Um, so you need to be aware then well, how have global temperatures changed in the past and how are they linked to carbon dioxide? And there is a general trend that carbon dioxide concentrations go up, so does the temperature. And then carbon dioxide drop and so does the temperature. But you can see here it isn't as clear cut um, as previously thought. And actually some people would use this to argue that the current increase in temperature isn't directly linked to carbon dioxide. But there have been enough experiments to sort of understandably prove that they actually are linked together. And obviously currently we're increasing the temperature of the planet due to this carbon dioxide, which many are linking to what is called the Hallis Holocene, sorry, um, extinction. And that current extinction, higher than expected, um, is likely due to climate change, which is likely linked. What are the reasons to use climate change, which is linked to the increase in carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, which is increasing the temperature. 
So you need to know a little bit about how the early atmosphere has evolved into what it is today. So the early atmosphere would have had a lot of the gases present here, CH4, methane, water vapor, and it would have all been vapor, it would have all been steam because the temperature of the planet was above 100 degrees. So all the water had boiled at that point, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and ammonia, NH3. And the reason these gases were prevalent was because they all came from volcanic activity. So very similar to what um, atmospheres of Mars and Venus are like. Nitrogen um, has built up in the atmosphere um, as it is unreactive, but all the others have reacted later to cause the numbers to decrease. So what was the main decrease? Well, the first thing that happened was the temperature of the planet dropped. That allowed the seas to form, and then life evolved in the sea. And the first forms of life would have been algae and bacteria that could do photosynthesis. And then over billions of years, plants evolved to do photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is a reaction you should know the equation for. But the plants take in carbon dioxide and water, and they give out oxygen. So over millions of years, this lowered the levels of carbon dioxide, making it more available, for, making the environment more suitable for other life, and it increased the oxygen levels. Now the oxygen took a long time to increase because at first it would have been absorbed into and reacted with rocks, but over time the oxygen levels did increase um, and obviously gave us the 21% we have today. You have an important thing, maybe more, about the decline in carbon dioxide, however, because carbon dioxide levels have fell over the 2.7 billion years. And the reason for this decrease is carbon became trapped in the oceans. Carbon dioxide is soluble and the oceans absorb it, which is why now we're worried about um, coral bleaching. Um, carbon car carbonate compounds formed in sedimentary rocks. So um, things like seashells and animals were made out of carbon dioxide absorbed from the water. They die and become sedimentary rocks. Plants and algae do photosynthesis and obviously dead plants and animals make fossil fuels where it was trapped away for a long, long time. So that dropped the carbon dioxide significantly. So there are three main greenhouse gases that you need to be aware of. They are carbon dioxide, methane and water vapour. There are other greenhouse gases as well, but those are the three you need to be aware of. And obviously it's carbon dioxide and methane that we are artificially uh, anthropocentrically increasing in the atmosphere. Why is this important? Well, the greenhouse gases are vital for our planet because if we didn't have them, we'd be too cold. It insulates our planet, it keeps the heat in, which keeps us warm. And what the greenhouse gases do is they allow radiation from the sun, which we call oops, ultraviolet, that's supposed to say, UV radiation in from the sun. Okay, um, that then is absorbed by the Earth. It's then emitted from the Earth as longer wave radiation, which um, you would have talked about um, earlier on in school as infrared radiation. And that infrared radiation um, is not able completely to escape. Um, you know, I'm not right. It's not able to escape to the from the planet because the um, the greenhouse gases absorb that infrared radiation prevent it from escaping and that is why our climate is increasing so on low levels we need climate we need carbon greenhouse gases if we didn't have them we would never have been able to develop life on the planet but as we can see in other planets when the greenhouse gases are really high that causes more and more infrared radiation get trapped on the planet and that causes the planet so there is a natural greenhouse effect which is needed to insulate the planet and that is um, important and the carbon cycle would have maintained that itself without human interference but we have en enhanced it by anthropocentric means such as burning fossil fuels um, and having high numbers of cattle releasing methane and chopping down rainforests and those things have emitted more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, meaning whilst the same amount of solar radiation is coming in, less infrared radiation is allowed to escape to space. And that leads to the greenhouse effect being worse, and that leads to climate change.